wouldn't be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone and thanks ever so much for joining us on part two of the epic micro bar top arcade machine build. So I lost a little bit of the footage when I was reassembling this. Unfortunately, it was just down to the fact that my video camera was not focused on the right aspects. So unfortunately, the background was in focus and the foreground, the detail wasn't in focus. So I've had to do a little bit of a rerun on some of the footage, but it is what it is. Let's get into the detail of this machine and see how it works. All right, spray can. Time to turn the workbench into a spray booth. chassis is all sanded down and nicely painted. Let's go ahead and reassemble this. So I want to show you around this thing. So monster joystick here, you've probably seen one of those before. A couple of missile switches. One turns on the monitor and the other one turns on the power to the monster joystick. The reason why I've done that is this eYoYo screen has got extra inputs on it. So I could potentially plug my Acorn Electron into the eYoYo monitor and leave the Raspberry Pi and monster joystick turned off. In the sides here, you would have to put your finger in here in order to reach the button on the monster joystick. So what I went ahead and did is with a rubber bands and a little bit of clever 3D printing, I made myself some push button extenders. There we go, much better. So here are those lovely push button extenders. We have a, a little USB card in here at the moment with some ROMs on it. The Raspberry Pi SD card is accessible here. And then here what we have is a display port, that's the HDMI connector. And so this guy here is the USB-C connector, and that's a Raspberry Pi 4 in there. Let's have a look at the electronics then. So the power comes in through this Anderson power pole connector and hits the first missile switch. So the first missile switch turns the power on to both buck converters. So we get five volts out of this buck converter here, which is connected via a little USB port right here. And this buck converter here generates the 12 volts for the monitor. Power out goes through this hole here, which is a little DC barrel jack. And in this hole here, we've got the HDMI cable. This entire monster joystick will literally just pop out once I've unplugged all of those things. So this is quite modular in the way it works. And that's going to make it really easy to repair or really easy to modify or perhaps really easy to use it with other projects going forwards. Now, the slightly more observant of you may notice that I've added an extra capacitor on the output of the 5 volt DC buck converter. So the idea behind this capacitor is that the Raspberry Pi then gets a reasonably clean power source going in. Now one thing to note is you are going to need access to the Ethernet port and the USB ports of your Raspberry Pi. So make sure you've got a little bit of distance between the joystick enclosure and the sidewall of your unit. So the power supply that I found for this device is a tiny little LG 19 volt 2 amp adapter. And all I've done is stuff a little Anderson power pole connector on the back of that thing. So we can go ahead and plug in our LG power supply, just like that. Or, if we decide we want to use this out in the camper van, we have a Makita battery, a 3D printed adapter, and that can also go ahead and plug into exactly the same power supply port there. All right, so I think it's about time we actually played some games to see how this machine performs in various different emulation platforms. Oh. 
Ah, come on. So when you put ROMs on your ROM cartridge, it automatically installs emulators, which is really quite cool. So what have we got? We've got the original Atari 2600, Game Boy Advance, MAME, which is the multiple arcade machine emulator system, the Sega Master System, the Sega Mega Drive, Nintendo 64, which works surprisingly well, the original Nintendo Entertainment System, PC Engine. We've got one special game for that, which was recommended by a Twitter follower. It's called Toilet Brothers. <laughs> RetroPie, which is the settings for RetroPie itself. And then the SNES, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Probably one of my personal favourites. So let's just have a quick look at Atari. Clearly, these early models are going to emulate very well. And let's play Asteroids. What you've got to do is blow up rocks. And, oops. You can jump, you can hyper jump, or you can uh, move yourself thrust in one particular direction. Oh, oh, oh. Next one then, let's have a quick look at something from the Game Boy Advance. This is ATV, or all-terrain vehicle, on the Game Boy Advance. And as you can see, it's quite a nice sort of 3D style game. And, wait, it's a, li a little bit of oversteer going on there. But, yeah. Again, 3D, a little bit pixely, but looks quite nice. Works quite well. Normally this would be on a much smaller screen, being a Game Boy Advance. Whoa, it's quite good fun. Oh. All right, enough of that. Let's get into MAME. And in MAME, we have all sorts of really good old school games. Let's play Double Dragon. And the idea of this game is not to punch women in the belly and show their knickers. <laughs> it's actually to fight the street hooligans. Oh, if I can find the appropriate keys. There we go. <laughs> Have some of that. Oh, oh, oh. Very cool. Proper old school main. Proper old school arcade gaming. Let's have a quick look at the Sega Master System. So a good game on here would be Aladdin. So the idea, oops, you gotta ah <laughs> you gotta run. You gotta run and jump over things. Oh, oh. and uh there we go. Oh, oh, ah. <laughs> this is a really good platform type game. Really good fun. So here we have the Sega Mega Drive. Uh, what are we going to play on here then, I wonder? Oh, Altered Beast. That's quite difficult. Again, a nice little platform game. And sort of... Oh, ow. Not punched in the nose by Hamlet. <laughs> Quite sort of simple, side scroller, but it's good fun. Anyway, the Sega Mega Drive emulates really quite well. So let's have a look at the Nintendo 64. One of my favourites that I used to play in the arcade halls was Ridge Racer. Here it is. The Nintendo 64 version on a Raspberry Pi 4 running RetroPie. Well, so far it looks pretty good. And I remember from my youth that the music in this game was absolutely fantastic and the visuals were great as well. A little bit of stutter there, but nothing serious. Quite playable. <laughs> I'm finding myself moving my head right and left as I'm driving round the corners. This is clearly working quite well. 
very, very cool game. That's right, use the car in front of you. Use its bumper to slow down. Look at that, absolutely fantastic graphics. And playing it on a, a little joystick, you know, this is just great. This is um, this is this has brought back memories and put a massive smile on my face. In fact, I can remember this track. Oh, come on! All right, there we go. Fantastic, going through the podium and checkpoint. Enough of that. Then we have the original Nintendo system. So a really good early game that was on the Nintendo Entertainment System would be Tetris. I'm going to play the USA version. I absolutely adore the music in this game. I could play this game for hours and hours. Fantastic. Absolutely love Tetris. I used to play it on the Game Boy many moons ago in black and white. This is bringing back nostalgic memories. This is the PC Engine. Let's have a quick look at Toilet Kids and see what this madness is all about. Not sure quite what this guy's up to. Ah, okay, right. So he's uh, flying his toilet. Uh, we've got bombs. So we can bomb these guys, and then we've got missiles to shoot other stuff. Oh, okay, there's poos that we need to bomb. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah, lovely. All right, uh, they, I don't know, are, they, are that frogs? Are they frogs, or what are those things? I don't know, but... Ah, oh, 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 I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Oh, there's a. that's definitely a Japanese toilet. <laughs> And then finally, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And here we are with Super Mario World. One of my personal favourites. Absolutely love this. Just magnificent music, magnificent gameplay. I'm trying to eat the apple. That's Yoshi's job. <laughs> there we go. Look at this absolutely classic gaming. Oh, hi, Yoshi. Hooray, thanks for saving you. Yeah. Come on, let's eat some apples, mate. Oh, <laughs> thanks for saving me, Yoshi. That was lucky. Right, enough of that. So we're going to let the expert show us how it's done. Super Bomberman 3. And there we have it, ladies and gents. I think I have now officially lost the arcade machine to my wife. <laughs> I asked her to play Super Bomberman for one minute just so that I could shoot some video footage. And that is the end of it. I have basically been cut off. <laughs> this arcade machine is going to give so much fun, pleasure and happiness to so many people, not just Vicky, not just me, but at some point this lockdown business is going to end and we're going to end up having fun playing arcade machines in the house. I now have, I think, three or four homemade arcade systems in the house. I'm sure you can probably find the videos if you dig through the channel. Thanks ever so much for watching. Take care. Have a wonderful week and weekend. We'll see you in the next one. 
Cheers and beers, people. Bye for now.